Hey guys, it's Lisa here and welcome to the first What's Up Wednesday with the brand new Pink Camera Design team. So um, I am going to be doing an art journal page. Now What's Up Wednesday is all about doing a process and getting involved with different mediums and making an art journal page out of it. I will try to guide you along. However, you guys know what the end result looks like. I do not. Um, so this is going to be the magic. You guys are going to be able to witness it um, and see how I get to the end result. Could be an epic fail. Could be fabulous. Let's find out together. So first thing I have done to my art journal pages, I have taped the spine with just masking tape. Uh, I am using this wide one. It's about a two inch wide masking tape and just taped it down the center and then I just went over the whole page with some gesso and that's it. That's all I've done so far. So just uh, had that prepped ready to go. Next thing I'm gonna do is I have some book text. Now I'm, this is just, I've just ripped pages out of a book here. So uh, I am going to paste those in. I might rip them. I might paste them in whole. I'm not really even sure what's gonna happen at this point. And I'm hoping that's matte medium. Oh yes it is, okay. So, this is going to be random. So when you do matte medium, you kind of do it like a sandwich. You put some down at the bottom. Let's kind of rip it just cause, just cause. And then just go over top and that will seal it in. I'm not sure again, what is even gonna happen with this. So we're just, we're just gonna let the magic happen. Just, just let it go. Just see what happens. Okay, so this has dried completely. Uh, I just ripped off some of the extra little hangover pieces along the edge. Uh, so I have this Donna Downey number stencil. I do believe this one is available in the online store over at the Pink Camera. Um, I do have some fiber paste. Now, normally I use modeling paste to do kind of like stencil work, but I thought, you know what, let's try this fiber paste because if I do a glaze over top, it's going to react completely different than modeling paste. Modeling paste would be kind of like a resist, whereas the fiber paste I feel like is going to kind of soak in a little bit more of the color. So um, that could be really interesting. I just have a paper palette right here. And the only reason why is so that way I can kind of scoop that out a little bit more. All right, so just with the back side of the palette, I'm just getting some of that fiber paste. And then I'm just gonna go in some random spots. All right, so I'm just gonna go wash that off. I'm gonna dry this and then I'll be back. Okay, so this is dry um, for the most part. So it's got like this really great 
um, tooth to this paste. Now, um, normally when I use the matte medium, it's really kind of a smooth surface. This has great texture. It's like really gritty and everything else. So I am going to amp up the color. Now, normally I would probably go over with a brown glaze or a, you know, teal or something like that. I'm going to opt for turquoise. Uh, it's a glaze I have not done before. So again, it's 50-50 mix. So acrylic glaze is this kind of medium. Ignore this. This is actually an acrylic glaze here uh, that I have poured back into this bottle. Um, acrylic glaze is something that is basically a time extender for your paint. Um, it also makes the paint a little bit more translucent. Uh, so with that being said, you can use it as a glazing medium. So you could go over top of this whole thing, let it sit for about a minute, minute and a half, wipe it off with the baby wipes, and then you'll just have a light, um, kind of wash over top of it. Now, the nice thing I'm thinking, I am thinking what is going to happen is that this fiber paste, because it's a very absorbent ground, it is going to saturate, it's going to take, like, absorb a lot of that um, turquoise paint, which I'm hoping. So let's cross our fingers. In my head, I sound fabulous, just so you know. So I'm just using a paper plate or a plastic plate. So just mixing it up, just like so. And then just washing over the whole thing. So just like this. So let's go over the whole thing. Let it sit for about a minute, minute and a half, let it dry, and then I'll come back. Okay, so it's been about, I don't know, maybe a minute. I'm kind of impatient. So I'm just taking a baby wipe and wiping back. And see, this is exactly what I was hoping for, that that fiber paste would absorb a lot of it. So every time you get a new, new part of the baby wipe, it is going to get a lot cleaner. It's just like that. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is amazing right there. Okay, so I'm gonna hit this with the heat tool. Heat tool. Okay, so apparently I cannot English today. Uh, I'm gonna hit this with the heat gun and dry this real quick. So I discovered this color combo completely by accident. So if you follow me on Facebook, um, I showed this. See this color, this bright pop of green? That came by complete accident. Now, we're gonna do that color combo, hopefully, in here. So, this is of course the turquoise. Now, this is a disgusting color all on its own. It's called nickel azo yellow. Kinda looks like a baby poop kinda yellow. Uh, but however, when you mix it over top of this, I am hoping I can get that fluorescent green color, which is uh, freaking amazing. So I'm going to dry this and then I'm going to figure out how I'm going to lay this color over top of this so that way I can get kind of tones of it. I might do another wash again, but we'll see. All right, so I've got that mostly dry. Um, okay, so how am I going to lay this color over top? 
you know what I could do is I'll just go in with my fingers. I'm going to add some of that paint just in a tiny little drop. I can always add more and just add a little bit of that acrylic glaze over on the side. And I'm just going to take my fingers, just kind of blend it in over top. Oh my gosh, do you see that bright pop? Let's go over here so you can see a little bit better. See that bright pop? It's like a bright pop of green. <gasps> so amazing. Oh, that is freaking gorgeous. That is amazing right there. Okay, now what to do. So first off, let's dry it. While I'm drying it, I'll come up with the secondary plan. Okay, I seriously don't know what I'm doing. Um, I pulled out this iridescent stainless steel course and I started rubbing it on some of these numbers. Now, oh my goodness. You would not believe, I'm just digging a little bit with a baby wipe because I want it to stay a little bit wet so I can move it. And then I'm just kind of like buffing it on. And it just, I'm not sure even if the camera is picking it up, but it just, I don't know, just gives like this steely kind of silver look. I'm just rubbing it over some of these numbers and over these areas. And then that's just kind of, gonna make like a little bit of a reflection on some of these I don't want to like do it on all of them because I don't want to lose some of that color that I have and then I'm just wiping some of it away and then that's just gonna give it some of that I don't know I don't know I don't even know if that did anything but I really am enjoying what what it's doing what it's doing um okay so what to do now um I kind of have this, I don't know, I have this vision in my head of 
like these kind of like watercolory kind of flowers but it's like how do I get that like I could do it with paint I could do that with paint um, I could do it with fluid acrylics too let's do that okay so I have some of these fluid acrylic lined up here I'm just trying to figure out which ones to use I'm just kind of pulling them up so I have this this is um, the Dollar Rowney Fluid Acrylics in a magenta. It's called Process Magenta. And this one's Quinacridone Magenta or Quinacridone Magenta, however you want to say it. I feel like this red is out. It's a little too not right color. And I have some blues. This brown not, might not work. So now I'm down to these, these four colors. I'm kind of feeling, because this is a green shade, I think that'll pick up nicely. I'll leave this one off to the side. I may use it. And then I feel like, I feel like this one would be more of a nice pop. So let's try. Okay, so of course I have this yucky palette. So this is fluid acrylic. So it's going to be really watery. Okay. Now I have, this is a half, or uh, number 12. Um, what do you call it? Round brush. Okay, so. So I just really want very loose flowers. You want to emulate like watercolor. I don't even know what shape I'm doing a flower. I'm just going to go in over top of that. And I'll sketch in some lines after. But I just want to have the, the original placement of the flower. I'm just kind of tapping and rolling my brush just to get the shape, just get the shape in. Okay, let's go in with the magenta, let's see what this does. Opting for the fluid acrylic version of the quinacridone magenta just because that other bottle does not want to open up. And then, why not, let's add a fluorescent pink highlight. I mean, why not, right? I haven't used fluorescent pink in forever. This could go horribly wrong, but I'm feeling like it won't. Just a little bit. Just a little bitty baby. Okay, so these have dried and they look like blobs, but I'm going to outline them in some sort of way. I'm just not sure how, um, but in my hastiness, I totally forgot to do leaves. So I'm trying to find... 
find a darker green. Oh, here it is. Uh, sap green, uh, a little bit of a darker color. And I'm probably going to want a liner. I have this one, so this one will be good for leaves. I do have some fluid acrylics out, so this is yellow. I just, uh, do you need fluid acrylics for this part? No, but I had them out. So since they're out, might as well just make use of them. And then this is the, what color green? Emerald green, fancy. And then I need a liner brush. Because I like to do liner work. Okay, so I'm just going to start off with some of the leaves. So just taking this part. So I'm just going to add like some leaves just like this. Not really sure what shape. And then just kind of add a little bit of pop of yellow. A little bit of other colors to them. And then just add some leaves and then we'll just kind of join everything in together. same sap green because I mix like all these colors together. We'll just start with, we'll start with this one. I can always get wider. I just kind of make a base for your flowers. Looking nice. Looking real nice. So I'm just going in with this is that fluid acrylic, that emerald green. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of highlights to some of these stems. So just mixing it in and just carrying it along just the edge of some of these. And if it skips, that's great. If it catches, it catches. If not, it's okay. Just to add a little bit of highlight.
Okay, so I normally will go to my go-to color of black in a fluid. Uh, this is a high line, a fine liner in the standard tip, so it's an 18 gauge. Normally I would go with black, but I feel like I need to kind of break out from a lot of my comfort zone stuff. So I'm opting for the white. I feel it'll give a good pop to what's going on here. Um, so I want to take this and I kind of want to maybe emphasize some of the lines. So there's a definite line here. There's a definite line here. Um, there's kind of a definite line there and I'm just going to emphasize those, those lines to indicate the shape of the flower. Um, I'm just going to do the buds of the flower. I'm not going to do the leaves or anything else. I just want to do the outline of the flower, if that makes sense. So I'm going to show you what I would mean on this one. So I just kind of go over the side here to make sure it's working. So I would go like that. And I just want it sketchy. Ooh, that looks nice. And this one here. Oh, dang, does that not look really pretty? That looks really pretty. Oh, that looks really pretty. I'm really loving that. And just sketchy lines. Oh, you know what? I was going to put a quote on here, but I totally am not now. Look at that. That turned out amazing. Okay, I got to let that dry. I am tapping out on this one because I feel like it is done. It is, this turned out way better than I could have ever thought. I'm really loving that. Uh, so, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you come back tomorrow and check to see who's up. Uh, on the blog and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I'll talk to you guys soon.